Mary received a visitation from an angel before the birth of her son. The angel told her of great joy to come and of the highest honour for her child. It was the beginning of a story which would also bring her great sorrow. Enya, daughter of Macnow, was also visited by an angel who spoke of the child in her womb and how his great work would spread like a cloak of wondrous beauty embroidered with flowers of many and glorious colours over lands far and wide. It was the beginning of a story which would also bring her great sorrow. It was a Thursday. The day he was born. 
1,500 years ago on this day, December the 7th. In the year 521. Enya was of royal blood. Columba, Columba, was born a prince of Ireland, whose destiny lay not in kingship, but in a monastery he would found on a tiny island off the west coast of Scotland, just across the water from his birthplace in Donegal. Shul Enya. Enya's child then. Is her a lenuf erivray? And her newborn child. At the very beginning of life. It tosha tinye be. It tosha tinye be. It tosha at Enya's breast. Reveals Providence's prophecy.
the angel told Enya that her son would be taken from her. They say he was only five years old when he left his mother's protection to begin his life of study. It's possible that later in his life she could have been with him on his journey to Iona. Only twelve men are mentioned in his as his companions, of course, in stories written by men, so perhaps they didn't feel it important to mention if there were women there. She could have travelled at a different time, of course, for legend suggests she may well have been with him on Iona, retiring later to the Holy Isle, the rocky place of the saint, a little further north of Iona, where she is said to be buried. If this is true, her influence would have been strong throughout Columba's life. Who fed me from her gentle breast and hushed me in her arms to rest and on my cheek sweet kisses pressed? My mother, mother, my Taught my infant lips to pray and love God's holy book and day and walk in wisdom's pleasant way. My mother, mother, my mother, who was my counselor. to see that I, when young, chose for my friends the giddy throng, and often told me I was wrong. You were wrong. My mother, 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 my mother. Led me to the house of prayer that I might gain instruction there and made my good her greatest care. My mother. to see me walk the way that leads to everlasting day and checked me when about to stray about to stray
did he leave Donegal, leave Ireland at a time when his power and influence was well established? He just set sail with 12 followers. 12 disciples. Perhaps he just wanted to spread the word of God across the sea to other lands. He was certainly successful in that. It wasn't a choice exactly. He was exiled. There was a war over a book. A holy book owned by his old teacher, St Finian. Columba was allowed to read it, but only to read it. However, he copied it for himself in secret. A saint committing a sin? I know. It has been known. <laughs> Look, it's a complicated story, but that was the spark that began a chain of events leading to a battle. One he was well suited for. Of course, they describe him as a giant of a man with spiritual powers that swayed events in his favour. In the end, though, despite winning, he was held responsible morally for the deaths of 3,000 men. He must do penance by converting at least the same number to Christianity, leaving Ireland behind. And it all began with a book. Books were so rare then, so beautiful and so important. Books have always been important, especially those which represent influence and power. Such as uh, the Nazis burning books as a symbol of their power. That was a very different kind of war. One fought not by holy men, but by ordinary men and women. Men fought. Women provided the ammunition, the food, the clothes, the guns, the intelligence. The fighter planes. Ordinary, extraordinary women like aeronautical engineer Beryl Platt, who did more than just pray for her country. Now pray we for a country that England long the happy and the gloriously free. Now pray we for a country that England long may be, the holy and the happy and the Columba travels not by plane, but in a small coracle through rough seas, searching for somewhere out of sight of his beloved Erin. Green lies the dancing water, green purple bowed with gold, brown winged my Kill the 
Like the people of Israel, Columba wanders, not in the desert, but across the sea. The burning pillar leading the Israelites mirrors the pillar of fire reported by an abbot to have been seen moving before Columba, who walked behind, flanked by angels. When Israel of the Lord beloved out of the land of bondage came, a father's God before her moved an awful guiding smoke and flame. trite heart, a humble thought, and oh, what a sacrifice. 
He landed on many shores, climbing to the highest point each time, only to see Ireland in the distance. It was not until he reached Iona that his homeland was lost forever.
plant an oak tree for each of those cut down to build his monastery? Did he plant a yew tree to preach under its branches? Did he plant an apple tree to feed his followers? It would be hard to grow an apple tree on Iona. The wind whips in and stunts the growth of any tree. Ah, but surely Columba, with the help of the Virgin Mary, would have, by a miracle, allowed the tree to blossom and fruit. Not sure the Virgin Mary would have been keen to help, if I'm honest. Why not? Columba banned women from Iona. And cows, frogs, and of course, snakes. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Most saints seem good at driving out snakes. But why ban women from Iona? I believe it was because he thought that... Where there is a cow, there will be a woman. And where there is a woman, there will be mischief. <laughs> now, Columba was born just 70 years after another of Ireland's most venerated saints, St Bridget, the patron saint of dairy maids, amongst other things. I've heard that there is a stone carving of St Bridget with a cow at Glastonbury Tor. I'm not sure she would have approved of Columba banning women or cows. <laughs> no, one of the poems attributed to her is clearly very much about how special women and their work 
which included brewing beer, were to her religious life. I'd like to give a lake of beer to God. I'd love the heavenly host to be tippling there for all eternity. I'd make heaven a cheerful spot because the happy heart is true. I'd give a special welcome to the women, the three Marys of great renown. I'd sit with the men, the women and God there by the lake of beer. Building an abbey on Iona couldn't have been done without help. His twelve followers were of his kin and likely two of noble birth. What would they have known of building or indeed much of what is needed for daily living? There must have been builders, servants too, whose wives and daughters would have had to move there to the nearby woman's island to milk their cows and brew their beer. They must have made living very complicated. Mm if not quite miserable. And his mother, Enya, was she banned too? Well, like almost everything in Columbus life, we can't be sure she was even there at all. Well, he may have banned women from Iona, but he wasn't able to prevent them following in his footsteps. He died only a decade or so before the birth of St. Hilda, circa 614, a highly respected and revered abbess, whose religious community consisted of both men and women, something that Columba might not have approved of. Although baptised into the Roman Church, she was heavily influenced by Celtic Christianity through the teachings of Bishop Aidan, who had himself been a pupil of St. Columba on Iona. Yeah, look, that's it, isn't it? Perhaps he showed her the secret of driving out snakes. It's a well-known story that Hilda rid her abbey and Whitby of a plague of snakes by casting them down to the beach and turning them into coiled stones. You can still find them on the shore beneath the ruined abbey. Ammonites named Hildoceros after her. <laughs> 
miracles are of course very important for saints and Hilda had many others attributed to her. Even at the hour of her death, a nun claims to have seen angels bearing the body of Saint Hilda heavenward. Que lucis ante terminum rerum creator poshimus ut proto a clementia sis presul et custodia. was renowned for working miracles too, although I like that one too. But mostly his were to do with healing, I think, and helping people in lots of ways. But I'm really dying to tell you about my favourite one. <laughs> Can I tell you about it? Look, the thing is, he is where the founding of the Loch Ness monster myth happened. Hey, That's you where it started. You're going too far there. No, what would a saint be doing making stories to attract tourists? Oh, I don't, I don't think he was thinking that far ahead. Um, it was more of a cry for help uh, from the local people, you know, around the lock, because this monster was killing people, right? And so what do you do? You get a saint to come and um, get it to stop. So obviously they asked Saint Columba, and um, there's a couple of of stories about what he did. I mean, some say he drove it from the river into the loch, and some say he rode out to the middle of the loch, which I quite like, but it take a while to do that. It's quite a big loch. Yeah. And then he's prayed, and uh, from that day on, the monster stopped attacking people. So, you know, that was, oh, it's definitely worked, hasn't it? And, and as you quite rightly say, it has helped the tourist trade quite a lot. Well, I mean, monsters make for some of the greatest stories and poems, but as the patron saint of poetry, I wonder if he ever mentioned this monster in his own writing. We'll never know. So little can be attributed to him. And the one I know that is generally thought to be by him is Altus Prosato, a hymn in honour of the Holy Trinity. So, no monsters there. No. It is not three gods we proclaim, but one God only we affirm by faith's integrity, in three persons exceeding glorious. At once when the stars were made light of the firmament, the angel praised for his wonderful creating, the lord of this immense mass, the craftsman of the heaven. Formed he the stars, put in their place as light, to light the firmament. Oh, <laughs> 
understanding is like a sun, which gives light to all thoughts, which gives light to all the thoughts. Understanding thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Memory wanes and the lives of these great men and women fade into myth and fable. Was St Bridget born into slavery? Was she part Celtic goddess? Whatever the truth, this much-loved saint and poet was most famous for giving away all she had. And indeed often gave away the riches of others to the poor, bringing light to their darkness. Did a path and shroud, fraught with famine, spectred foe, fraught with famine, spectred foe. But like sunbeams through. St. Columbus spent the rest of his life spreading the word of God throughout Scotland and establishing Christian communities wherever he could, turning his monastery on Iona into an important religious, cultural and political centre. Seasons turned and years passed, each one marked in joyful celebration of the wonders of creation and the knowledge that his life was drawing to an end.
Just as his mother, Enya, had received a visitation from an angel before his birth, so Columba was told by an angel of his impending death. The apple tree that we, well, we hoped he may have planted when he first arrived may not have survived the harsh weather that blasts the shore of Iona, but his faith had brought him to understand that apple trees have other ways of growing. The tree of life I saw has seen it better with fruit and always green. The tree of life my soul has seen little with fruit and always green. The trees of age are fruitless be compared with Christ the apple tree. His beauty doth all things excel, by faith I know but ne'er can tell. His beauty doth all things excel, by faith I know but ne'er can tell. The glory which I now can see in Jesus Christ the Child. 
child so wise. Bless my hands and bless my eyes, and bring my soul to paradise. Jesus Christ, thou child so wise, bless my hands and bless my eyes, and bring my soul to paradise. Jesus Christ, thou child so wise, bless my hands and bless my eyes, and bring my soul to paradise. still attracts pilgrims to the immaculate, I'll show you it, the immaculate, um, uh, it's the restored abbey in Ayun there it is. Um, but the Columbus relics aren't there anymore, um, they were taken away, there was a Viking raid, I didn't want it to get spoiled. Uh, some of them I believe are resting eternally with Saint Bridget. <laughs> pilgrims and tourists on their way to this beautiful abbey, um, often file past the ruins of a nunnery, which was founded there 600 years after Columba's death by Bethulk, the black nun. Many noble women now, but they, they, well, they lie buried in these grounds. But um, we know little or nothing about the women that Columba himself encountered during his life, who influenced him in many ways and who you helped. They are ghosts really, Use, useful to hit for the telling of stories about him, to tell about his miracles and his healing and his compassion. But they are somehow themselves passed over by history. But in our story, it is his mother, Enya, who has the last word. This was the monk's testimony. His faithful brotherhood. Worthy art thou of sainthood. And the unction of God. Ola yeish ye. Emigrant. Eirjerach. Pilgrim. Hashtjalach. Missionary. Tachgeneshiv. A leader. A canard. A poet and say, Heart is say, 
diplomat scholar evangelist as all the is our nerve a paragon a saint his mother show chestiness of our Enye. Enye, attesting, cried, Thou art a fount of joy to thy kin. Mach jonich fik morun. And source of everlasting joy and pride. Jonich fik For that which was vouchsafed to me, with you still in my womb, has come to pass. preserved at your zenith.